Morning to you. How are you? Good morning. A very good morning. Um, great after that fantastic win yesterday. Um, it's the one we called out for and the girls delivered. Yeah, so how do we deliver? What was different about the performance last night from what we've seen kind of in the earlier part of Vera Power's reign? The, the where we pressed them um, and the belief that when we pressed high that we could cause them damage. I think it's been damage limitation a little bit against those kind of teams before where we've sat back and we've let them come on to us and just sheer pressure has always won out in the end. Like we can defend very, very well, but to ask a team to do that for 90 minutes <clears throat> is too much. But the fact that Katie was going in and intercepting balls that were maybe 50-50, that they were risky. And if she missed them, maybe we were a little bit exposed, but she believed that she could go and win them. And that kind of set the tone. And I think in the first 10 minutes, the, the link play between herself and Denise, our two best players was fantastic. Heather Payne, tireless running, you can't say enough about Heather Payne's performance, but I think the fact that they stepped up so quickly in the match and put their footprint on it, it really spurred the girls on and, and Finland looked absolutely shell-shocked after the first 10 minutes. They didn't expect Ireland to come out in the way they did and it took them a very long time to react. When they reacted, they showed that, yeah, they are a decent team. They put us under an awful lot of pressure, but we were so resolute and had such belief at that point that it was kind of too late for them. What was really interesting around that period as well, Karen, was when Finland started to take a stranglehold in their game. Ireland hadn't sat back at all. The pressing was still there. So what was happening in, say, the second quarter of the match that Finland did take a bit of a stranglehold, possession-wise anyway? Finland are a technically better team. We've probably got more superstars in our team. When you look at it, we, they don't have a Katie McCabe who can go and do damage. They don't have that kind of world-class pair, but they're very, very solid all around the pitch. So... <clears throat> The way we play as well with that three-man midfield and the amount of work that they have to get through, it, it's very, very tiring and it's a, a big ask for us to press the, the back line for the whole game. So there were points where we had to drop off, but we limited them in a way that it was their centre half who was putting crosses in and that's that's pretty easy for a three-man, three centre defenders to deal with. So yeah, they peppered the goal, they put a lot of crosses in the box, but it was from a distance that you could see it coming for an awful long time and you'd be disappointed in your defenders if they weren't dealing with those balls. It, what we're talking about, I suppose, is the emergence of the identity of the team and it's been a while coming. That that was kind of the... A lot of the criticism early on in, in Powers' reign was, well, what are we actually trying to do? Who are we trying to be? And is it fair to say that, that these, this three games together, Australia... Um, the Sweden game and this game begins to show us what she's trying to do or is it still a little bit early? Are you still kind of a little bit jury out? You need to see a bit more in terms of the attacking style. Yeah, I do need to see more in terms of the attacking style. If you look back at the stats, we were still probably dominated in terms of possession in those three games. And we gave a really, really good account of ourselves against some really top teams. Yesterday was different in terms of the fact that Ireland, when they got the ball, they took an extra touch and they played a little infield pass into their midfielders. I think the big thing for me yesterday was that they looked like they trusted each other a lot more. Um, like I said, when Katie bombed forward, she she didn't she wasn't worrying about holding the defenders' hands. Like there was still four defenders behind her, and that's what you need. You need everyone to step up and take responsibility. And too often we're looking at Katie and Denise to do it all by themselves, whereas. Yesterday they were doing it, but it was because they had trust in the people around them. Um, Megan Connolly really stepped up as well. I, I was surprised that she was even allowed to take the free kick because you'd expect Katie or maybe Lucy Quinn who had scored that one against Australia, but it was in perfect territory for Megan. So for her to have the confidence to say, this is my free kick, that's fantastic to see because she's a senior player in that team now. She's playing for Brighton week in, week out. So it's players like that that we needed to step up. Um, because we know what to expect from Katie and Denise. But we saw that. We saw Neve Fahey put in a pr fantastic performance as well. Um, and perhaps she came in for a bit of criticism for the Australia goal, but or sorry, the, the Sweden goal. But there was leaders all around the park, and that's what we needed. It can't just be, we're not a two-man team. We ha It has to be more than that if you're to get to the next level. And I think that that was, that was it. The performances and the leadership was spread throughout the team yesterday. So in terms of a style, it's still largely based on heart and determination and all the rest of it. And the biggest praise that was given yesterday was, oh my God, look at that work rate, people getting back at 90 minutes from Heather Payne tracking back and passing players out at that time, even given all the running she's done. So a lot of it is still based on that traditional hard work and dedication and, and all the rest of it. But the fact that there's belief now and we're doing it higher up the pitch, 
that's what's important. It's a, it's a step in the right direction towards forming an identity, I guess. So I guess we're going to see more of that in the return fixtures against Sweden and Finland. And the question is then against Slovakia and Georgia, when Ireland all of a sudden have the possession, what is the identity? I presume that that is the missing piece in the jigsaw when we get an idea of this team. It is, and it, it, it always has been. And we've we've kind of scraped by the likes of Slovakia in the past. And off the back of this result, I really hope that when we go into that Slovakia game, that that's a that's a three 0 win. Like that's that's the gap that we want to create between us and the teams behind us. So they're seven places behind us. We just beat a team that were seven or eight places ahead of us, and and that's the gap we need to start forming. That's that's the show of progression. Yesterday was a massive show of progression. Um, but it, we don't want it to be a flash in the pan. Everyone will remember we played fantastically well in that European qualifier against the Ukraine and we attacked and everyone was like, this is the dawn of a new era. And then when the pressure came on and we had to go and get a result later to Ukraine away, we didn't have the we didn't have the bottle, I guess. We didn't have the professionalism to see it out. Things just kind of fell apart in that game. So it's seeing if the improvement we've seen in the last few games can continue on. And if that belief is not just a one-off thing, that that's actually down to us playing fantastically well and, and making marked improvements in every area of the pitch, particularly in attack. Well, Slovakia offers a good opportunity to see exactly where the progress has come from. I think you were in the team that beat Slovakia in the qualifiers in, in 2018. And that was, a, as you said, a scratchy enough game. It was a 2-1 win and there was 3,500 people at it and that was considered a great crowd at the time. So like if uh, before a full house we put in a good performance and it's a routine victory, then that's a clear sign of progress. But if it's still a bit scratchy, then, you know, this success is going to come in bits and, bits and pieces and it's not going to be a straight line. Yeah, and there's an awful long way to go in this as well. You'll for, you can't forget that everyone has to come back around twice. And But getting the, the home win against Slovakia and the crowds are growing, the attention is growing. We see there's you know it, there's pressure coming on when you have tweets from politicians and stuff coming in congratulating you this team it, it garners a lot of attention um and it takes it on pretty well but it's it's a time now where the delivery is key and, and one victory isn't enough consistency is key to that and slovakia are, are no no pushovers i mean they only lost one to sweden as well we're lauding our performance against sweden about a one a loss and Slovakia did the same and they, they came away just with one goal deficit against Finland um, as well. So they're, they're always a tricky side. They're very scrappy. I think that the game won't be a free-flowing game of football. They'll be more willing to put in tackles. They'll see themselves as the underdogs. So they'll scrap us in the way that we've scrapped teams in the past. And again, that's a different challenge for us to have to stand up to. I, I read a quote by Vera during the week. Um, applauding how disciplined we've been and, and the lack of fouls we gave away against Sweden. But sometimes you have to get into those things. I think if a midfielder had recognised in the Sweden game, OK, my centre half's gone missing, my full backs are gone, I need to give away a free and get a yellow card here. There's the time and a place for, for bringing out that scrappiness and, and throwing a leg in. And um, Slovakia could be that challenge that we have to step up and, and be that nasty team as well. Um, so we talk about versatility and stuff as well. It's versatility and attitude of how we approach games, versatility and how we play, and it's versatility and how we react to teams who are going to treat us like we treat them. The ambition of the team seems to be in, improving as well. I, I guess, I mean, we would be very hopeful that there will be a performance that is a bit more uh, expansive in the home games than the ones that we've seen. It, it does seem as if we've built a really good style for those uh, top teams and the next the next evolution of that as we see with all teams is having more confidence technically and that comes from winning as well the other thing that was very clear was that there's a, a togetherness in the group and I guess if you've been through the losing streak and the misfortunes that this team have been through it either breaks you or it makes you and it certainly seems like you much have more insight into this that, that they are a group that is quite together Yeah and I think that's a lot of credit to the girls themselves and how they get on as a team because during that period of when they were losing all of those friendly games and we couldn't really see an identity, there was no real patterns of play, it would be very easy for them to sit in their rooms and say, oh, this, is, this isn't working and what's going on here. But they've stuck at it and they've stuck together even when they've had a lot of changes forced upon them. And, and we talked about inconsistencies before that. Um, so it's very easy to let something like that weigh in on you, especially when they're getting a lot of media attention. They do have 
all of these sponsor deals coming in, it does add pressure. It's more things to for Katie to have to deal with in, in terms of she's rolled out for so much media and for her to still be able to put in the performances that she's put in is is a sense stands to her character um but it, it's a testament to the girls because they have had a lot thrown at them like you say and and those inconsistencies that they don't let that get to them that they're they're still there fighting for each other first minute to 90th minute and now it's okay we fight for each other but now let's just start playing let's play let's enjoy the way we play uh, and that has to come in the next two games and that should come in the next two games um against slovakia and georgia where they can hopefully go out and enjoy themselves with a little bit less pressure and show us yeah we're we're a dogged team we can grind out a result but we can also go play and that's what we need to compete at a higher level how big a loss will eileen gleason be to the setup eileen is massive because she's that irish connection as well she's she's a great character she's very funny um and she's very very intelligent like in terms of the research that will have been done for these games you can be damn sure that eileen gleason had an awful lot to do with it and and maybe making recommendations on how we snuff out the opposition um threats but uh, as well as that she's a very very good coach and the her connection to the irish game is palpable and i'm always very wary of us losing that connection because we're always saying oh everyone's going professional it's fantastic it's the best thing for the for the irish team but there has to be we have to feed into that and we have to drip feed girls from the women's national league into the irish setup and then they can go and get professional and things have to be done the right way so mm -hmm. the fact that she was that connection to the irish game i think that that's really important and i hope that our her successor um has that same kind of connection to ireland um and to the the girls in this country and their development because the senior team because we don't have a huge abundance of players we we do need to get some girls into the senior team to give them the exposure so that they can then get those professional contracts as opposed to it being the opposite way around um so i think that her successor will have a big job in, in doing that and a big role in doing that but i'm really really happy for eileen i've worked under her for many years and she's a fantastic coach and you won't find someone more dedicated um to taking on a team and i think glasgow have gotten a really good person there she will throw her all into that role as glasgow manager and um uh, she she's going to help them go to the next step they've they're top of the league but apparently their performances haven't been as good as other years but um you can be sure that eileen will research it and, and find a way to get the best out of that team too that piece around the connection between this team and the national league in ireland it does seem it's something that that vera pow has really worked on herself and, and, and has, holds in really high regard, um, Karen. I, I'm not sure if that's something new, but certainly listening to her over the last couple of weeks, she's not saying well, it's great that we've got loads of players in the WSL. There's very much a domestic focus from her perspective. Yeah, I think that's interesting. And I do think that's still Eileen's influence. Um, yeah. And I think it's the fact that Anya's had a good few games and there's yeah. been um, some good games in the, in the women's national league as well and obviously there's more exposure now tg Carr coming on board and and things like that so again i think that that's why it's important that there's an, an irish person in that setup who has the connection to the irish league because vera um she's saying she's seeing the games and stuff but she's not based in ireland and and it's very different looking at something on screen and being there in person and seeing the influence someone can have off the ball um and things like that particularly in defensive or midfield positions um, they're not the ones who are going to grab the headlines but when you're there in person you can kind of feel that so having those representatives at those games is important to make sure that you're picking the right players and for me I, deli I was delighted to see Avian Clancy in the squad for for the senior setup I know she didn't get on and it takes away from the 19s maybe but it shows that they are watching the league because for me she's been the standout young player of the league um, this year she's really really composed and plays with a lot of maturity in her game and she's not going to be the person who's getting loads of goals, but she's a standout player when you are at those matches. So her inclusion kind of proved to me that people are paying attention to what's going on in the women's national league. So a slightly bigger picture question then about where we are at the moment. Um, how well set up are we for success um, and, and what needs to happen to make sure that uh, one-off performances aren't just going to be our lot into the future that we can actually build on this and so when the Euros qualification rolls around we're close to being top seeds if not top seeds or we certainly believe that we're going to be able to challenge the top seeds do you mean with this current squad or well, just kind of with the game like so it, to, to come out from and to 
like what's the state of the game at the moment with uh, respect to the pathway for players to make it to the national team and the quality of coaching that they're getting at uh, the at the right levels. Yeah, well, the pathway is there because we we do have a domestic league that that gets attention, and we have the 17s, 19s, and senior setup, um, and they're really good. But we have to be conscious that they're an amateur setup, and people can only give so much time and effort to those. So the one missing puzzle piece for me is that proper formulated, structured home based sessions that happen consistently. That they're not happening once a month or once every three months or just before camp or things like that. So I think that it's not enough in Ireland for us to just leave it to the clubs for player development. Um, we do have some underage structures, but I think that has to continue to up into mid twenties, because like I said before, women can mature later than men. Um, it's not all done for you if you haven't made it by the time you're 17, 18, like maybe it is for guys. Um, so I think that those, I did just one extra training session a week um, even if it's just targeting the, the 19 to 23 year olds, just not forgetting about that, that group of players, um, will ensure that there is a pipeline that are always kind of ready. And, and I'd have Vera feeding into those as well. If she wants to play five, three, two going forward, if that's going to be the identity, make sure that that's what's played in training and just have a more holistic view of, of the, the opportunities that having more home-based sessions can bring because you would have players who are up to speed maybe not in terms of skill that the WSL players are but in terms of their tactical awareness like you can feed into that and then help them grow in terms of their ability when you have them in camp and they've got better players around them so that's something I think needs to be really really consistent and particularly now there's loads of time between now and the Euros to have that set up and it takes not too much effort not too much investment and then in terms of the team it's kind of more of the same, um, just belief in your ability going forward, um, confidence in, in how you play those games and just doing it higher up the pitch. I think I think we're too still too willing to drop back and, and, and grind things out. And against the really, really top opposition, the Swedens, um, they'll still create chances and, and things like that. So there's there's still work to be done on the pitch, but but also off it. In if we're to to take a long term view at it, and I think you're right. I think the Euros is is the opportunity for that us to have a full squad of players ready to take that next step. At the moment, I think we've got a few subs who can come on and can impact the game, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes. But to have a full squad that if someone got suspended, you wouldn't be worried. You know, yeah. Jamie Finn was on two yellows now. Are we a little bit worried? Or Katie, we know her her temperament. She's very, very passionate and she can get into things and she's very fouled a lot. And if she gets suspended, are we worried? Um, so it's about creating not just a good 11, but a good 23, 24 that you can call on at any time. All right. It's always easier to have these conversations after a win as well. So Karen, yeah. good stuff. Thanks a million. Cheers. Thanks a million. Bye. Karen Duggan, give us thoughts on Ireland's 2-1 win last night. If you want to get in touch with us this morning, you can grab us on 0879 180 180 or you can leave a comment for us on the YouTube channel.